Okay, Grace Perkins, Sports Injury Presentation, 18.1. Hi. Hi, my name is Grace Perkins, and I'm going to do a presentation on sports injuries. So, an in introduction to sports injuries. Sports injuries refer to any type of injury that happens during sport or exercise. It is most commonly known for muscular, musculoskeletal injuries. There are a large range of factors that can increase and increase the chances of injury during sport and preventative measures can be adopted to reduce these factors and minimise risk of injury. So an in extrinsic risk factor are factors that are out of performance control, so they occur outside the body and some can cause very serious injury. However, prior no knowledge and understanding of factors can help minimise the extrinsic risk, risk factors as you can avoid them. Here's a list of factors I'll be talking about. So coaching, incorrect technique, the environment, clothing, footwear and safety hazards. But here's just a list of a few sports injuries. These are just a few examples. So you can have concussions, strains and sprains, dislocations of joints, you can pull muscles, bruise, cuts, shin splints, dead leg. These are just a few, but there's, there's a lot more. Um, and here's a list of a few preventative measures. So there's a number of preventative measures. There's two strands, the role of the coach, and also there's the environment and the equipment. So the role of the coach could be to have up-to-date knowledge of the sport, so knowing the new rules and regulations that come in, um, have qualifications, so for example in football they should have the FA level one coaching qualification, and they should, they should also have an awareness of their athlete in case the athlete may have previous injury or something like that. Um, so environment and equipment, so there should be a risk assessment done of the environment before sport has taken place. All the safety hazards should be pointed out and the risk of them should be minimised. And also athletes who are playing contact sports should have PPE, which is personal protective equipment. For example, in football, they should wear shin pads or hockey gum shields. Um, so coaching. Poor coaching can have serious impact on athletes as coaches could teach the wrong technique or not look at the athlete's ability before a session. So a main possible injuries that could come from poor coaching would be strains or sprains as players could be working too hard and they might not be able to handle that sort of physical exercise. Um, so a preventative measure would be coaches having prior knowledge of the athletes before performance. So the play, the uh, coach could give the athlete a par cue before, the, before they join the session so they could see previous injuries, so the coach will know what sort of technique to teach the athlete. And they should also see the ability of the athlete so then they can say what type of level they're at so they can learn stuff for their appropriate level. Um, this, that would also help with the way the coach sets the training session. Um, this would also enable the coach to reduce risk of injury for, with the strain, strains and sprains. Um, the coach should also have the correct qualification as this would ensure they have the skills to put on a safe and enjoyable session for their athletes. So incorrect technique is a liability on the pitch as it can lead to strain and sprain injuries again, or even concussions. Um, this, the strain and sprains could come from athletes moving muscles that they possibly shouldn't be moving to do a certain skill. Um, this could be prevented by coaches having good knowledge of their sport and good knowledge of their athletes. Um, to reduce them. To minimise risk of injury for poor technique, the coach should 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 um, watch the athlete closely to see if they're doing it right or wrong. An example of this in sport would be tackling in rugby, as it is very dangerous, and the um, the athlete could put their head on the wrong side and get kneed in the head, and that could cause concussions. But the coach could prevent this by teaching them the correct technique 
and watching them when they're tackling so that they don't put their head on the wrong side. So environmental factors is quite big in sport. So for example, if it's too cold, players could get hypothermia and that means they are unlikely to carry on playing. Um, also, if it's really cold, athlete, the pitch might freeze, so players couldn't play on the pitch, for example, in football. And because the pitch is frozen, they could fall over and get concussed. So a way to prevent this would be, for hypothermia, athletes should wear a lot of jumpers and a lot of layers to keep warm or just keep moving to get their blood moving. And if there's a frozen pitch, um, there should be a risk assessment done on the area and if necessary, move the training session inside or just cancel the fixture. Um, environmental factors, there's also heat. Heat is a big problem for some nations. Um, athletes could become dehydrated and very fatigued. This is called hyperthermia and can be stopped by making sure that the appropriate preventative measures are put in place. So the preventative measures would be um, Coaches reminding players to bring lots of fluids to training sessions and matches, lots of breaks so that they can have a rest from the heat, and um, just making sure that, and coach making sure that none of the players show any signs of hypothermia, and if they do, tell them to take a break. Um, so, as I said before, the preventive measure would be moving training and matches to an indoor environment or change the type of training to accommodate the weather um, and also as I said I do risk assessment before the match to make sure the pitch is safe. So footwear is important especially in football because there's a lot of different types of shoes you can wear. Um, so if a player is wearing inappropriate footwear it'd be unsafe because they may slip in the mud and this would cause injury to the muscles by pulls or sprains and um, so they should always make sure they're wearing the correct studs depending on what type of pitch they're on. So if they're playing on a soft ground pitch, they should try to wear metal studs, a hard ground pitch, uh, just normal plastic moulds. Um, also, studs can go into players' legs, which is why they've banned blades from football, because they can cause quite big bruises and cuts on their legs. So a preventative me measure for this would be making sure players are where the appropriate Studs, so a ref would come around to all the players before a match and check that they're wearing the right studs um, just to make sure everyone's safe on the pitch. Um, the other thing is clothing. So clothing is important in sport because it can affect how players play, um, but they could also cause risk to other people if there is the wrong usage, of, if there's inappropriate usage of the of clothing. Uh, this also relates to personal protective equipment and athletes should be wearing the right protective equipment to take place in sport. Uh, for example, a gum shield should be worn in hockey to protect teeth and and the mouth from if they get hit by a ball and shin pads should be worn in football to protect players from getting studded in the shins. Um, athletes should also use the equipment in the appropriate manner um, for example, having a hockey stick, you shouldn't hit other people at the hockey stick, they should um, use it to hit the ball. Um, this could be prevented by coaches constantly checking that athletes are, um, athletes are do, using the equipment appropriately and checking that all the equipment is the right size for the athletes because if it's too big then it could cause harm. And last one is safety hazards. So environmental checking before a match is important because the coach should make sure that the pitch is in the appropriate condition to play a match. Um, a check is done by pitch uh, a coach going over the whole pitch, making sure there are no safety hazards there. So this would be a risk assessment. Um, they would also be making sure the pitch is not waterlogged or too icy as if the pitch is waterlogged, there is there is a slight possibility that, especially in rugby, players can drown. And um, if the pitch is too icy, if a player falls over, they could get concussed. The, the solution to either one of these problems would be to cancel the match or change location to either an indoor environment or a 3G pitch if necessary for football. 
um, as I said, to see the safety hazards, there should be a risk assessment done of the area and there should also be a trained first aider present during the match in case of the, any injuries or any problems during the match. That's it, thank you. Okay, uh, just two, two questions before we get started. Looking back at coaches, you spoke a lot about coaches having to make decisions for environment, about going to different areas and those sort of things. What role do you think coaches have in understanding the rules of the games or the governing body guidelines? They should follow them. They should have a very in-depth understanding because they'll be teaching them to the athletes. So they should be going off the governing body guidelines and um, teaching them that. And how is that going to help prevent injury if they've taught the rules and the guidelines to the kids? Because the athletes, no, the coaches, the governing body create the rules so that it is safe for athletes, that, so that sport is a safer environment for athletes. So by them following the guidelines, sport should be safer. Okay, excellent. Um, with regards to um, equipment and environment and the role of the coach, do you think they're both important or maybe one has a more important role in preventing injury? I think they're both important. But I feel like the role of the coach could be slightly more important because if they have an athlete who's a beginner and doesn't know how to play the sport, they could do something completely wrong and that would be quite, that would cause more harm. Okay, thank you very much.